Ladies and gentlemen, tonight to start our program, we'd like for you to allow us to introduce all the way from Bangladesh, Roman the Magician and his team.
magical and memorable way to open up our 2018 Cultural Diversity <coughs> Awards program. That performance by Rona and his outstanding assistance was definitely amazing. Please let us give them another round of applause. The history of our Cultural Diversity Committee. In the fall of 2001, Dr. Mark Johnson, Vice President of Administration and Planning, requested that cultural activities be planned for February 2002 in recognition of Black History Month. Diane Butler, a past PTC counsel, was asked to coordinate these activities. Four activities were successfully planned and implemented. Butler, along with Johnson and Perno Henderson, also a past Vice President of instruction would later meet to discuss minority retention at Pulaski Tech. They agreed that a committee should be formed to address the cultural needs of the college. Volunteers were solicited and the Cultural Diversity Committee was formed in fall of 2002. The committee continues to report its activities to be incorporated into the school's minority retention plan for the Arkansas Department of Higher Education. Now, a little background history of the event. Over the past 16 years, the Cultural Diversity Committee has formed a variety of banquets like this with different themes and keynote speakers. That include celebrating African-American achievement with keynote speaker, Dr. Logan Hampton, then the director of the UA Little Rock Donaghy Center, but currently the president of Lane College. Remember the past, shaping the future, with keynote speaker, Augusta Farber, a past dean of business here at UAPTC. Inspiring moments, women who have made a difference with keynote speaker, former KATV anchor, and current director of communications with Little Rock School District, Pamela Smith. Celebrating diversity, our common heritage, with keynote speaker, Tracy Steele. Men of excellence, with keynote speaker, Darren Williams, Arkansas State Representative. Making a difference through service, with keynote speaker, Pastor C.J. Duvall, Senior Pastor, Teresa Hoover, United Methodist Church. I am my brother's keeper with keynote speaker, Dr. Glendell Jones, Jr., President of Henderson State University. Transitions, the past, present, and future with keynote speaker, Dr. Calvin White, Jr., Chair of African American Studies at the University of Arkansas, Fayetteville. Celebrating diversity, finding our common ground with keynote speaker, Dr. Sybil Jordan Hampton, retired educator and former president of Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation. And also, Power of a Dream, then, now, always, with keynote speaker, Cecilia Bonds, a student ambassador and disability services student worker here at UA Pulaski Tech. With all the banquets and great speakers we had over the years, the Cultural Diversity Committee have also provided other activities ranging from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. observance, soul food cooking contest, poetry night, showing DVD documentary, honoring and recognizing Women Month, genocide awareness, Pico de Mero, LGBT, and many other activities that were sponsored by the committee staff and the faculty around campus. The Cultural Director Committee has had a positive impact on the college and the committee has influenced the creation of new student organizations, campus programming within departments, and understanding and appreciation among university groups. Can we please give a hand to all the hard and continuous work being done? Now, without further delay, we would like to bring to the stage one of our next group of performers. Our next group of performers are called the Righteous Poets. 
They've been in existence since 2000 under the umbrella of Backyard Enterprises. It started as a, a periodical that featured writers from all over the nation. It has since been transformed into a youth-oriented literacy creative writing and performance club. This initiative led by Stacy and Leon McAdoo has assisted young writers in finding their voice and confidence as individuals and performers. There are approximately 50 students in the club at Little Rock Central High School, but 10 core poets. So without further ado, we'd like to welcome to the stage the Righteous Poets. How's everyone doing? That would be pretty good if we were at like, I don't know, just lunch or something. But we are recognizing people tonight at Pulaski Tech, right? So, so we need to be excited. How are you doing? Yes, yes, yes. I'm a 23-year educator in the Little Rock School District, and my wife uh, works at Central High School and started the Righteous Hour, the, the Righteous there. And, and so I don't know why, but now I teach at Central, Lord have mercy. And, and so now uh, I am co-sponsor of the Poetry Club, and we have a dynamic show for you all tonight. But we need you to do something for us. And what we need is, as I try to inconspicuously move this cord with my good leg, <laughs> Lord, we need you to give us feedback. Now, feedback can come in the form of a snap. You may hear something you like and say, let me, let me see that. Good, good. Feedback may come in the form of that thing you heard that just gets to your soul and your belly and you just gotta go, mmm. <laughs> Let me hear you say, mmm. Mm. Say, ooh. Mm. Oh. Say, ah. ah. I'm just playing with y'all now. All right. <laughs> First to the mic, give it up for CEO Norrell. Just getting too heavy, I can no longer bear the weight. 
Lord, take it away. Thank you. This young lady is coming up now. She's in the Righteous Club. She goes to fair now. And uh, I've seen her grow up from a small, just little seed. Now, now she's blossoming into like a, a flower tree.
See, I'm giving y'all the word like it's coming out the Bible. When I speak this for you, I should just put it in subtitles. I know y'all not on track. So I'm going to do y'all a favor and I'm going to take y'all. I said this poetry is just like a nunchuck. Again, my rhymes are real strange and your brain's not arranged. This poetry is like a nunchuck because these bars are off the chain. See, my rhymes is cold as ice, which to me is nice. I mean, the way my rhymes roll up on you, you never know what's coming. It's like you're playing in paradise. I know y'all tired of this line, but I'm gonna have to hit it with y'all one more time. I know y'all not on track, so I'm gonna do y'all a favor and I'm gonna take y'all. I said, you, my rhymes are real nice, which is in their cold as ice. The way they roll up on you, you never know what's coming. It's like you're playing in paradise. You no, know, the way you roll, they roll up on you, you never know what's coming. It's like you're playing with a pair of dice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I spit it so real, I'm so deep, forget a shovel, you need a drill. I mean, I said, Say walk while y'all blinking. I never lose sight while y'all blinking. I stay afloat while y'all sinking. I told y'all I'm the man. What in the world was y'all thinking? Thank you. All right. I know y'all not on track. No. I'm not that clever yet. Coming to the stage now, this young lady is someone that I envy because um, when I charged for a whole set, she got one poem. I was like, wow, how did that happen? I've been doing poetry for a long time, longer than Jim. Please put your hands together for Jim. Thank you. Okay, um, this poem is entitled, Lesson Still Relevant. My parents are my first history teachers. At an early age, in my earliest days, I was taught the culture behind my race, the beauty beyond my face, the common inventions and ways of living that you can trace back to Africa. I know about the brotherhood. That was taken from the motherland. My mother's hands never changed my natural roots. My mother's hands held me as we watched roots. My father's lands compelled me to pay attention to roots. My brother and I watched eyes on the prize. My brother and I watched documentaries that show Martin Luther King die, Emmett Till die, black people die in America, black people die. My brother and I watched the news as Trayvon Martin's parents cried. My parents took us to museums and we observed the gyms. They took us to lectures and we listened back then. They taught us about Central High School too. Way before we went to school, and in a way, I felt like the tenth little rock nine. From behind, the little sister of them all, the fly on the wall, the shadow on call, and I saw how they were treated. And I saw how they retreated, and I violently fought the system that fought them back ten times harder. I saw because I am the daughter of the movement. I knew this at an early age, so by ninth grade, I expected attending Central High to be iconic, to be as if I would be a part of history. I represent the third wave generation after the integration, desegregation. It's amazing that it wasn't that long ago. I know that we have come from a long way, but we still have a ways to go. But at least in Arkansas, we can say it's starting at Central High, where I am now one of nine black students in a school of nearly 3,000, a place that has over 20 languages and counting, a school that I am not greeted every day with 2468. You don't want to integrate shouting. In 1957, Central High was the beginning of change, and I knew this at an early age, I mean in my earliest days, because my parents are my first history teachers. Thank you. We've come to our last point, so everybody say, ah. Oh. All right, and this young man, he's, um, he's I'm just not going to say too much about him. He's, Kind of pathetic. Just put your hands together. Put this next time. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm shy. <laughs> My name is LeBron McAdoo, and um, this is a piece I think that um, when I wrote it, I was talking about a specific experience. But I think everyone can relate to it if they hold to something that's bigger than themselves. I call this piece faith. The complete and ultimate trust is something that has no proof. They call that faith. 
Regardless of how many bullets splash, bombard, and break black bodies, laughter still manages to surface above the sorrow. No matter how this country paid a debt of gratitude with a signed check to exclude. The stench of implicit bias has a sick in my stomach for ambition's audacity. There's a smell bold within my soul more powerful than the power to be. This sit stems from buds of hope. The blooms in the full-fledged flowers of faith, sprouting signs of God. How else have we defied the odds and stood against the system so royally? I drowned the Jew with froze, braids, stains, dreads, laid in low shade. A determined kingdom's grace written on our face. Black don't crack exemplifies our faith. I fire, holding our age like a bloodline to the fountain of youth, a lifeline to the mountaintop to see in our reflection something higher. Can hear a jazz, blues, gospel, and hip hop, a communication of consciousness, melody and rhyme coded with resilience. This is a language of brilliance, reaching for revival, to straighten back like the spine of the Bible. Black folk pray, pressing palms to leave no space for doubt, to count on what can't be counted out, to know no lawyers needed to put you in God's will, to know God's hand on the wheel, enough to keep you driven down this inheritance of belief while steering this legacy of expectation, gassed up on a train of anticipation, passed on through another generation's umbilical corded highway paving roads to amazing. Beautiful black babies born with a blessed assurance that links us like chains that shield instead of shackle, like puzzles that don't force but fit our peace, linked like Legos stacked in our favor, connected by kin of skin and a conviction of family. Now let me be clear. Be strong, my brother. Keep your head up, sister. Be sheltered with faith, covered with faith. Fitted with faith, armored with faith, to weaponize this contact I feel. The soldier forward on the battlefield, it's real. Waging war against thoughts and question what is possible. Refute the incredible mistake, the achievable argument, the inevitable challenge of believing in the pain that has weight. Confused this relentless attitude, this merit that made many great, this might that ignites my soul simply states that I am mustard seed, sir. I am mustard seed, certain of the complete and ultimate trust in something that has no proof. So believe my heart, or you could take my faith up with God because we've come this far by faith. Let us congratulate 
the 2018 Veteran Cultural Diversitory Award winner, Mr. Michael Lambert. Now, our next Cultural Diversity Award winner is coming from one of our faculty members. This year's faculty recipient has been, well, has had an extensive background nurturing diversity. For the past decade, they've been committed to reaching and teaching unique populations. Formally trained as an educator, they began their career teaching special education students with severe emotional disturbances and a therapeutic day treatment classroom. After several years teaching a wide range of in age of ability levels, they transitioned to adult education. Leading the Central Arkansas team of the Nurturing, the families of Arkansas program through the University of Arkansas Little Rock, Mid-South School of Social Work. Through these experiences, this person has remained committed to inspiring individuals to set and achieve their highest goals. As director of the 3D program at the University of Arkansas Pulaski Technical College, Culinary Arts and Hospitality Management Institute, they are committed to re redefining the dimensions of diversity in the Little Rock community and beyond by empowering students with intellectual disabilities to demonstrate their strengths in the hospitality industry. This scholar is an Honors College Fellow from the University of Arkansas Fayetteville and has a Master's Degree in Education from the University of Central Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, let us congratulate the 2018 Faculty Culture Diversity Award winner, Ms. Chelsea Moore. to increase African-American male and female student enrollment 
and completion of the STEM courses and programs and transfer for bachelor's degrees. Their work with students is a clear example of that goal. It has been said that this individual focus on our program success can be summed up in two words, intentional and data-driven. They can be served as the chair of the Institutional Research Planning and Effectiveness Committee and also as the vice chair president elect of the staff senate. Prior to that, they served as the senator for the chief academic support service district. In July, they will take the helm of the UAPTC staff senate and become the first woman of color to sit in that seat. She also served on the student service assessment team, the college Take your time, baby. The college strategy planning team, and most recently was named the college academic team. You can see she believes that service to the campus is important, as well as taking the leadership roles in these organizations. What makes her service unique and cultural diverse, diverse is that many times she is the only person of color male or female on these teams. She is making her mark for women and people of color on our campus. She is creating lots of firsts and her students as well as her co-workers couldn't be inspired by her first. Ladies and gentlemen, let us congratulate the 2018 Staff Cultural Diversitory Award winner, Ms. Monica Jones. <laughs>
Let's give it up one more time for Mr. Timothy Woods and Mr. Trevor Jackson. They were named the 2017 UNPTC Academic All-Star, along with being a student ambassador. This student has been a great asset to the TRIO Student Support Services Program as an advocate and recruiter. They have maintained a perfect 4.0 GPA. This student takes their education very seriously and is not afraid to reach out for assistance when they're in need of answers to their concerns. They are very organized and extremely ambitious. This student has been a great mentor to peers and treats everyone equally. Ladies and gentlemen, let us congratulate the 2018 Student Cultural Diversity Award winner, Mr. Lop Nguyen. household, 
that he spoke English or speaks English and Spanish fluently. This was particularly useful as we began to have more and more Spanish-speaking students enroll at the college. Their patience in translating forms and application for students who spoke very little English <coughs> created some great friendships. Hispanic students often stopped by the office simply just to spend a few minutes speaking to a friend in the native language. They were more than happy to keep their language skills intact. When they left UA Pulaski Tech in 2012, they joined Arkansas Community College. This cultural diversity award winner is currently working on a bachelor's degree in computer science through the UA system, Diversity. Last year, they once again connected with UA Pulaski Tech, taking an active role in the newly founded UAPTC Alumni and Friends Organization, where they serve as the group's president. Their loyalty to the college is evident and the plans they help are outlined for the alumni group. They are very proud to continue their affiliation with UAPTC. They have nearly lived in Arkansas long enough to be considered a born-again native, but holds firmly to a Puerto Rican, New Jersey heritage. They are proud of the qualities they inherited and continue to share with their spouse and two sons. For this special individual, cultural diversity not only makes the world more interesting, entertaining, and fun, but it's also a part of their core values. They meet no strangers and welcome individuals unconditionally. Ladies and gentlemen, let us congratulate the 2018 Alumni Cultural Diversity Award winner, Miss Yvonne Grinaldi. This concludes our round of awards. So let's once again give a round of applause for all of our award winners. Now, this event is actually a little bit more than an award ceremony and entertainment. This is also an opportunity to recognize or honor some who've made significant achievements towards cultural diversity within our community. First off, we'd like to honor the Little Rock Nine. As you all know, the Little Rock Nine were a group of nine black students enrolled formerly at an all-white central high school in Little Rock, Arkansas, in September 1957. Their attendance of the school, at the school was a test of Brown versus Board, Brown versus Board of Education and the landmark 1954 Supreme Court ruling that declared segregation in public schools unconstitutional. These nine students who registered to be the first African Americans to attend Central High School were Minnie Jean Brown, Elizabeth Eckford, 
Ernest Green, Thelma Millichid, Melba Patillo, Gloria Ray, Terrence Roberts, Jefferson Thomas, and Carlotta, Wall Carlotta Walls, all recruited by Daisy Gaston Bates. This group soon became famous as the Little Rock Nine. Ernest Green was the only senior amongst the Little Rock Nine to become the first African-American to graduate at Central High School on May 25, 1958. Several of the Little Rock Nine went on to distinguished careers. This group has been widely recognized for their significant role in the Civil Rights Movement. So please, join me in recognizing these nine great students that helped pave the way for all of us to be able to attend school together. myself a fairly educated guy, but the first time this came up in one of our meetings, I could actually say I had never heard of it. Just a thing to be here in Arkansas, to be within this community, and to not have heard of it. But it also emphasizes just how important it is for us to share all facets of our history, not just part of it. And so, on September 9, 1957, six African American students attempted to desegregate North Little Rock High School. They were seven seniors from the all-black Scipio Jones High School initially registered to attend North Little Rock High for the 1957-58 school year, but only six students attempted to enroll. They were Richard Lindsay, Gerald Persons, Harold Smith, Eugene Hall, Frank Henderson, and William Henderson. The students were accompanied by four African-American ministers, Although the North, Little Rock Six School, the North Little Rock School Board announced the decision to postpone indefinitely the integration of North Little Rock High on September 4, 1957, the students and the four ministers arrived on September 9th for the first day of school. The six students were approached by 10 white students at the front steps of the school. The white students pushed and shoved them away from the steps as 40 to 50 white adults watched from across the street. Principal George Miller and Superintendent F. Bruce Wright came out of the school and asked the six students to come inside to talk. The white students refused to move even after Superintendent Wright threatened them with no admittance to the school for the year. The six black students were instructed by Wright to meet him at the school administration building at 28th and Poplar Streets for their, for their conference. By September 23, 1957, the six students had enrolled at Scipio Jones High School. The North Little Rock School District did not desegregate until September 3, 1964, when eight African American students were admitted at the all white Clendenin, Clendenin and Riverside Elementary Schools. The North Little Rock Six did not receive recognition until September 9, 2007, when they were honored at a ceremony hosted by the City of North Little Rock and the North Little Rock-based nonprofit Stan Foundation. Please let, help me to welcome one of the North Little Rock Six to the stage as we honor him, Mr. Richard Lindsay. school, we discovered that the teachers and the principals had put things in place just in case we got accepted. Unlike the Little Rock Nine, 
We weren't hand-picked. We were just picked. So when we got back to the school, we had learned that they had tutoring sessions, books set up. They were ready for us to go to Marlboro Rock High if we had got accepted. And that, to me, was nice. Because that, up until then, I wasn't a very good student. But I became a good student after that. And that was neat to me. Now, I've always lived in North Rock all my life. I lived within two blocks of school, basically. But the other day, which was yesterday, in fact, I learned something that maybe I didn't know. I went to the store to pick up one item to a store within my neighborhood. And as I got to the store and pulled up in front of it, there was a young man standing in front. Now, when you see many people standing in front of the store, the first thing you want to do is go the other way. And he was just standing there. As I got out, he was looking at me, so walking toward me. And what he said was, my car stopped down the street, and I need a jumper. Well, I don't really want to get involved with people that I don't know. I guess I'm probably different from you guys, but I kind of shy away from it. And he was standing there, and I said, well, I don't know if I got any jumping cables. I used to have them in my car, but I think I took them out. And he was still standing there, and I was still looking at him. <laughs> so I turned around. I said, let me look at my car. Maybe they still in there. So I walked over there and I looked at the car. And sure enough, there they was in the back seat. I said, well, I tell you what. Right now, I've got to go in here and get this item from my wife. So I'm going to go in here and get this. If you don't find them by the time I get back, we'll talk. I went inside, messed around. By the time I got back, he was still standing there. But now, he's leaning on my car. <laughs> And he said, you going to do it? I said, yeah, let's do it. I said, you need more cables. You need a car too, don't you? He said, yeah, but I need it. We don't have anything to jump it off with. We got in the car, and it was two blocks away, and we started around there. As we got to where his buddy was standing waiting on him, I stopped and backed up, and then he stopped getting out of the car, and reached over there and shook my hand and said, thank you. Thank you. I'm white, and you stopped and helped me, and you're black. And all I can say is, man, things have changed from way back then. <laughs> this is a new world. We help everybody, and everybody helps everybody else. Thank you.
What? I don't know what wrong. If your mama had this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know <told> you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
our final performer for tonight, Miss Janine Perez. <coughs> is one of the most talented and well-known artists, performers from Central Arkansas area. She's a self-taught jazz musician with a booming voice, and she performs with elegance, fun, and excitement in a jazz R&B atmosphere. She will keep you entertained with the journey back in time to the sounds of Billie Holiday, Nina Simone, Aretha Franklin, the staple singers, Ella James, and Otis Redding. She loves music from the 30s to the 50s and captures the spirit of that live sound era with her music. So without further ado, I'm gonna to step to the side and allow you all to enjoy the sounds of Ms. Janine Patrice Perez. Deborah's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
sometimes I like, get, get, you don't mind if I talk, right? We don't. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Sometimes when I like, see, I like to feel music. I might not know all the, oh, I can see some folks. <laughs> Ain't nothing like making some eye contact. But some, when I get on stage, I'm like real nervous. But when the music starts playing, and I get to feel that thing, oh my God. See, every, you may or may not know, but every single show that I do, I dedicate to my daughter. My daughter, Olivia, who passed away November 3rd, 2016, in a car accident. The day before her 20th birthday. See, she's my playhouse. Yeah. And so I dedicate each and every time that I get on stage to her. You see, when I'm behind stage, I see that orange light, I saw those blue light, and those are her favorite colors. And so I knew I was right at home. Not, not to mention, I just love black to take anyway. Yeah. And so I am so thankful that I have the opportunity to be here. And I thank you for allowing me to be able to feel and go places that the song may not have, may not was supposed to go, but because I felt it, I went there anyway, and you were there supporting me. You are an integral part of what I do, and I just want you to know I love you. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. We love you too, Janine. Yes, we do.
Racial and Cultural Diversity Commission for their help on reviewing and choosing the winners for each of our categories. Dr. William Torrance, the Chair of Racial and Cultural Diversity, Laquita Grayson, Nicole Freeman, Carlos Albert, and Erica Benedicto, the Diversity Program Manager. Thank you guys for your help and support. Lastly, I want to thank Mr. Richard Lindsay for sharing with us your story you gave us on how far we still need to build bridges and, and some of the advice you just gave to the audience and the students. Thank you again, Mr. Lindsay, for coming out. <laughs> so I'll leave you all with this. Diversity is defined as the condition of having or being composed of different elements, variety, especially the in conclusion of different types of people, such as people of different races or cultures in a group or organization. Diversity also means different individuals valuing everyone heritage, skin color, beliefs, culture, and lifestyle. And I hope that we brought diversity to you all with our different performance tonight. Thank you all and have a good night.